also to some of the course staff that I have up on stage with me. So I always like to start the semester by introducing you to the people that are going to help you on this incredible journey that you're starting today, right? So, you know, computer science is a very much a two hemisphere activity. Programming is something that involves both your right brain and your left brain. That's one of the things that makes it so fun and also one of the things that makes it so challenging. Along the way in this class, you're going to spend a lot of time interacting with computers and trying to get them to do what you want. And that can be an incredibly frustrating process because computers are all left brain, okay? Computers don't have a right brain, right? Computers are great at being logical, analytical. Uh, they will take your spells, the magical computer code that you send them, and they will analyze it perfectly and correctly every time, and they will tell you unfailingly every time that you are wrong and exactly some little hint as to how, okay? The people on the stage behind me constitute the right brain part of the class, okay? They are here to help you, they are here to support you. There is no way to not learn how to do this if you don't give up. So the computer is gonna give you lots of reasons to give up, the people behind me on the stage are gonna be the one that hopefully are gonna keep you going, okay? In addition to this group, we have like 150 course assistants signed up this semester. There's about 500 students in the class, so each group of three or four of you, in some sense, has a person that is there to help you throughout uh, this experience, okay? I want to introduce a couple of the more important members of the course staff before I let them take off. So this semester we have four head CAs. Um, the sort of head head CA is Ben, um, master of all things uh, CS125. Ben was the head CA last semester. He's been doing this for, Ben, come up. Yeah, people need to be able to see you. So um, Ben, you know, helped write this semester's MP. He knows more about the class than anybody except for maybe me. Um, so I have three other head CAs this semester that have more specific responsibilities. Daniel behind me is going to be helping run the course forum, which is an incredibly important part of your experience in the class. Is Max here? No, Max. So Max Kapinski is going to be leading our course development efforts. And then Amirtha, did we get her? Yeah, it's class time. So Amirtha is going to be uh, working with Ben on the MP and also on MPs next semester, right? So these are the, some of the uh, undergraduates who will be helping lead the class. I also have a fantastic group of TAs this semester that will be leading labs that you guys started yesterday. Uh, I think some of them are here. So uh, I have Beichen, um, Bruno, Jishnu, and gosh, uh, Mincham. And then I also have Gina, Heather, trying to get the names. Sneha, and I'm going to cheat. Look at my list. Zenny, all right? Are some of them here? Can you guys step forward if you're, if you're here? You guys already met uh, people yesterday. So TAs, again, will be in charge of running labs, right? And they'll be a contact person for a lot of the questions you have in the course, right? Um, I also, so office hours that you guys are going to uh, come to, this is one of the primary ways that we provide you with that support, both technical and emotional throughout the semester. Uh, we run office hours once we start releasing the longer assignments. We'll be running office hours 40 hours a week, five days a week from 12 to 8. Um, all in the basement of the Siebel Center where many of you had your first lab yesterday. Um, that's always a place that you can come anytime you have a question. And we really encourage you to come there when you don't have a question. Just come there and work on your assignment so that when you do get stuck, which will happen sometimes pretty quickly, you'll be surrounded by helpful, encouraging people that can help you out, okay? So I have a team of people that we refer to as office hour captains, again, that are undergraduates who are responsible for helping office hours run smoothly. Uh, we have three returning captains this semester, Rina, uh, Rima, Nikhil, and Ajay. And then I have two new captains, Hyo Seng and Long. Are you guys here? Some of them are here, okay. So these people are incredibly important for the office hours aspect. We also have a team of really experienced uh, CAs that are gonna be helping lead office hours. These are people that have done it before. So there are five of them. They're Blair, David, Lou, um, Matt, and Ree Song. Are, are any of you guys here? All right, so step forward if you are here, right? So, so again, these are faces that I don't really need to introduce them to you too carefully because you will come to know these people. You will see them in office hours. Some of them uh, will become good friends of yours by the end of the semester. And then in addition to that, like I said, we have so many people that are excited by what they learned last semester, that took this course, that struggled throughout you know, the entire 15-week journey and got to the end, and in addition to the other things they're doing this semester, have decided that they want to actually come back and help you go through the same experience. 
okay? So we have something like currently about 150 people that are coming back from last semester that will do a couple office hours, some of them will help out with labs, right? And to me, this is a really sign, a good sign of how important this skill is, how important this knowledge is that you guys are about to learn, right? You get to the end of this, and many of you will, will go through the same thing, and you're so excited by what you now know, and you're so thrilled by the new powers and capabilities that are now at your fingertips that you actually want to share them with others, okay? And I hope that many of you will be back with me on stage in Follinger in fall 2020 to welcome in the new class as course assistants as well, once we get to the end of the, the journey together. All right, so a round of applause for the course staff. All right, thanks guys. I will see you around. All right, I'm gonna let them head out. Okay, so, and, and again, you know, if, if I haven't convinced you already by the number of course staff that wanted to come back and help you learn this, you're in the right place. Of all the things you could be learning, you know, and I'm biased because I teach this course and I love teaching this course, but I think of all the things you could have chosen to study this semester. There's lots of courses that we offer here on campus, and they're super interesting. They're great. I just sat through one that was about anthropology. It was really interesting. But this is the best, okay? It's the most useful, it's, and it's the thing that's going to unlock for you this incredible new capability, right? Because you're not just learning about something. You're also going to learn how to do something. When I took a class like this like 20 years ago, I'll never forget this. The first day of class, the professor told me, this is one of the only courses at this university that teaches a skill. And that is true, still of this course. You will learn about computer science in this class. And computer science is both a conceptual and an applied discipline. But you are also going to learn to program. And that skill is something that you can use to change the world. I know it sounds so cliche, but it's actually true. If you think about all the really interesting, exciting developments that you guys are living through as human beings on this planet, whether or not they're cool new technologies like social networks that we use to connect with each other or influence elections, um, or whether or not they're self-driving cars that are allowing us to fall asleep at the wheel, right? Um, you know, some of them are good, some of them are bad, but so many of them are connected to technology in some way. And once you learn how to program, you will be able to be part of the community of people that is changing the world by applying this skill, okay? So, let's start from our, our initial exploration to computer science. We're gonna start with the things that computers are good at. So why are we so interested in learning how to communicate with this particular machine, all right? Um, computers can do math. They can add things together. We're gonna show some examples of this. Uh, computers can make simple decisions based on data, right? Go right, go left. Right, by looking at information that you, in a way that you, uh, you set up. Computers can do these things extremely quickly. That's maybe one of the things that, that sort of brings the magic into this equation, right, is how fast computers can do these things. Computers can store and manipulate data. So a lot of the things that we do with computers that are really exciting are about taking data about the world from the outside moving it into the computer system and then processing it in some way to create new data or insights about that information, okay? And then finally, computers can communicate, and that can be both with you in a variety of ways, whether it means drawing the screen, um, sending you a message, or with other computers over this, you know, this incredible uh, system that we built called the internet that we'll talk a little bit about more later in the semester. And that's really it. That's the thing that we're gonna, these are the things that are, we're gonna talk about for the first couple weeks of the class, all right? So let's start looking at some actual computer code together. This is something that we're gonna do in class a lot. So uh, let me pause and say, if you don't um, have your laptop out and if you haven't uh, loaded up the slides for today's class, please go ahead and do that, right? I want you to have your laptop out in class. I know that's weird, you know, I know that, you know, other people will say, oh, this is gonna prevent you from learning. I don't buy it, not this stuff, right? You learn this by doing it, and when you have your laptop in front of you, you'll be able to interact with these examples that we've embedded in the, in the uh, slides. This is also how you get participation credit for being here in class, okay? I don't use clickers. You have the slides open, you follow along reasonably well, and you'll get participation points for that day. All right, so let's, let's run this code. So if you click down here in this area, you can run the code on your own machine. 
You can also edit this. So what am I doing here? And again, we're going to come back and talk about this. I know for some of you that haven't seen code before, this might be really frightening. Um, but what I'm doing here is I'm just doing some simple math. I'm declaring two variables that store integer values, data, and then I'm uh, adding them together and I'm printing the result to the console so that we can see it. And then I'm doing another calculation on line five where I'm actually creating a new variable and adding up uh, both the, the, the values in the two variables I had already created and one, and I'm printing that, okay? So, you know, again, if you're brand new to reading and working with code, that's okay. Right? We're going to slow down over the next couple classes, and we're going to go through this stuff step by step. But I bet if you sort of squint at this, right, if you've had any high school math or whatever, you can start to figure out what it's doing. And I will encourage you to interact with these. So we've, we've designed this whole system so that you can play with these examples and see what happens. Right? So here I just changed the value of the variable x to 4. I rerun the, the program, and let's see what happens. So I can change that to negative 1, see what happens. right? Um, this is something that we refer to as a playground. It is designed for you to play, right? This is one of the ways that you learn this skill when you're getting started. Nothing bad is going to happen, okay? Even if you make a mistake, nothing's going to burn down, your computer's not going to go up in smoke, nothing's going to crash, right? So you are encouraged to, to play in this playground. It's a completely safe environment for you to learn how to do this. And a lot of the way that you learn, particularly when you're getting started, is by Looking at an example, running it, seeing what it does, making a change, running it again, seeing how the result changed, and starting to build up some intuition about what you're asking the computer to do. Okay. So computers can also make simple decisions. So this is a case where I'm making a decision about what to display to the screen based on a piece of data. Okay, so I'm saying if the temperature is below zero, then you should do not come to class. Maybe that will be actually true this semester, right? There was a cold day, I think, last uh, winter where we didn't have class because it was like negative 30 or something like that. If it's that cold, then we probably won't have class. Um, okay, so let's run this. Okay, so now I have this, um, you know, terrible blob of, of gobbledygook, okay? And this is another thing that I want you to start getting comfortable with. Failure, mistakes, errors. Remember what I said about computers all left brain? It was a mistake on this code. I hadn't finished it yet. Um, and the computer is not always very good at telling you what's wrong when you make a mistake in your code. And computers are just really, really literal, and they're very persnickety about making sure you get things exactly right. And if you don't, they may give you a error message, or they may tell you this is wrong, but they may not give you a lot of information about what to do, okay? In this case, what I forgot to do is that I forgot to actually tell the program what the temperature is. So today the temperature is like 30, something like that. Um, and so the computer's gonna tell me it's still winter. If the temperature outside, instead of 30, was like negative 10, then it would say skip class. All right. Again, if you're not familiar with this, we're gonna do, you know, this is not like your introduction to conditional statements. We'll get there in a few classes. This is just day one. I wanna introduce you to some of the things the computer's good. All right, so what about repeating things really quickly? All right, so here, and again, you, you, this syntax may be unfamiliar to you, but what this piece of code is doing is it's uh, incrementing a value of a variable, it's taking a variable, and it's adding one to it over and over and over a million times, okay? So imagine how long it would take you to do that. Let's say you're like a, you know, you're putting a million in those little hatch marks people use. Imagine how long it would take you to do that Here's how long it takes the computer to do it. Did you see it? Here, watch carefully. Oh, it's easier that time. Oh, this one's slow, okay. It's actually a lot faster than that. Most of the delay here is caused by how these playground examples work, right? But by just a million calculations, a fraction of a second. And computers can communicate, right? So this is the seminal first day of class example. And you know, when I was looking at the slides for the semester, I thought maybe I should change it. But no, you can't change Hello World, right? Hello World is so, it's so important, it's so seminal. You'll read about this a little bit in the book that we're gonna have you read this semester about how, where this example actually came from, right? But whenever you start learning a new programming language, one of the first examples is frequently getting the computer to print something to communicate with you, to print some text to the screen, right? Hello World is frequently what's used. All right, now, if you look at these capabilities, so here is why 
this skill that you guys are going to learn this semester is so powerful. Here's why it's changed the world sort of beyond recognition over the past couple of decades. Because all these things that computers are good at are typically not things that humans are good at. Okay, we don't, we're not good at doing repetitive tasks. How many people have ever had to do something where it was like, you know, you're repeating the same steps over and over and over again for hours and hours. Maybe it was like some sort of data you needed to work on, or it was like um, paperwork you had to do or something like that. Has anyone ever done anything like that? I'm sure you all have, right? Doesn't it surprise you how quickly you start making mistakes? Like, maybe you're better at it than me, but I'll get started, and like half an hour into it, I'll be feeling like in a groove, and then I'll realize like the last 10 I did are totally wrong, right? You know, I was doing it correctly, and then I started skipping a step, or instead of putting things in one box, I was putting them in the other, right? We are not good at this, and it's also pretty unpleasant. This is not stuff that you should want to do. So one of the dangers of learning this, and I will warn you about this beforehand, is that if, if, you, if you like doing repetitive tasks, great. If you don't, you're probably like the rest of us. You will like it even less after you learn how to program computers, and you will want to do it even less, and you will find ways to avoid doing it by writing computer programs to do the work for you. There, there are some stories you can find, I'm not encouraging any of you to do this, about people that uh, took some type of data processing job that involved some type of menial steps of like repetitively processing information. They wrote a computer program to do it, they were able to work remotely. And then for years, they did no work and got a paycheck. Because they, they, like, they were completing the task. The employer was happy with what they were doing. I've read stories about this. And people are like, yeah, maybe once or twice a month I had to like, fix a bug in my program or something like that. Right? But the rest of the time, they're just hanging out on the beach. Um, so you can use computers to, to augment and to complement your own capabilities. I also think in a lot of ways, and this is something that I want you guys to think about this semester as you interact with computers and with the course staff, um, learning how to work with computers really actually starts to highlight, oh, this always happens. I don't know, I don't know why that happens, but it's easy to fix. Learning how to work with computers will actually help you understand what is human about yourself. Because my hypothesis is if a computer can do it, it's not uniquely human. So you'll discover that some of the things you thought made you human aren't actually true. But humans have these really special capabilities, and we should emphasize those when we interact with each other. Right? All right. So as I mentioned before, this class works on two levels. Computer science, one of the things that's really cool about it is a field. It's, it's both conceptual and applied. So we're going to talk about ideas and about big concepts, right? Algorithms, approaches to solving problems. Right? Complexity. How hard is a problem inherently to solve? Right? That's something the that computer science is really concerned with. But we're also going to teach you how to program. And so you're going to learn how to write code in the Java programming language, and by the end of the semester, you'll have actually built a small Android application from scratch with a lot of help from us. Okay? So the, the conceptual side of computer science has its roots in math and, con and is concerned with sort of abstract ways of solving problems. Um, you know, again, algorithms, and then also uh, the hardness of things, right? So, but problem solving, right, is really the conceptual concern of computer science as a discipline, right? And the craft is you get to take those things you're learning about how to solve problems and actually apply them by writing computer code to solve the problem, right? So there's, you know, there's a lot of times where we're going to talk about a particular way to solve a problem in class, and then you'll have an assignment where you actually have to go off and write that code and get it to work. Okay. So here are some of the conceptual terms in computer science, just a broad overview, right? So algorithms, ways of solving problems. An algorithm is not a piece of computer code. An algorithm is something that you implement by writing computer code, but an algorithm is a way to solve a problem. It's, a, it's an approach, right? Um, and also, what about certain problems makes them harder to solve than others, okay? You know, there's some problems in computer science that we're still struggling to solve, even though computers are so fast, right? And so what we learned over years and years of, you know, using computers to solve problems is that some problems are harder than others. We'll talk a little bit about why that is. Representation. How do we represent data so that computers can actually manipulate it, right? So 
one of the ways to get computers to do useful work in the world is to have them work with data that we take from the world around us. But in order for a computer to work with it, we have to find a way to represent it in a way that the computer can use. So we'll talk a little bit about this. Recursion is a particular problem-solving approach that involves identifying similarities in problem structure and exploiting them by ways of breaking the problem into smaller pieces until it's easier to solve. So this is something that we'll talk about about halfway through the class. All right, so what about the craft aspect? What are we gonna do from a programming perspective? We're gonna teach you how to program, and we're gonna teach you several different aspects of programming. We're gonna teach you to write what are called imperative programs. These are small programs that use variables and simple conditionals and loop statements to manipulate data and solve problems. We're also going to introduce you to a technique and program that's called object orientation. We're going to teach you object-oriented program. Objects are a way of representing data that allows us to combine state, information about the data, with behavior, useful methods that we might want to write that manipulate that data. Okay? And then you're going to get some experience, and this is really the only way to learn this, in what's referred to as software development. You're going to, like I said, you're going to write, with our help, an Android application. And so you're going to have to use the tools that you have to use to write Android applications. That includes, you know, uh, a big, you know, IDE that we're going to help you start installing next week in lab, right? And you're going to have to test stuff, and you're going to have to debug, and you're going to have to read a specification and figure out how to implement it. These are all things that allow you to start to think about working on larger software projects, right? Because that's where things really get exciting, right? Once you learn how to do this, then your only limitation is time. If you want to solve a problem, once you know how to program, you can do it. It's going to take some time and energy. Uh, you're going to hit some snags along the way. But you, it, it, you know, once you have the skill, the number of problems you can solve in the world really expands dramatically. That's one of the things that's so exciting. All right. So, so here's, here's the thing. I mean, I think programming gets a bad rap. And unfortunately, I think uh, there's too many people that teach uh, courses about programming that don't like to program. All right? I like to program. I know a lot of people like to program. I think it's incredibly fun if you do it properly, okay? Um, it's hard. It is simultaneously forcing you to access lots of lots of different parts of your brain. There's the left side part that's trying to satisfy the computer and the right side part that's trying to do something beautiful so that you don't make yourself or the people that have to read your code sad, right? Um, and I hope that once you get good at it, and once you get more comfortable with it, it'll be something that you will enjoy as well. That really is my goal, right? I think it's possible for everybody. I think this is something that, now you have to understand what it is and you have to get used to some of the things that go along with it, right? Failure is a part of programming. It's a part of reality of my daily life. It's not something that goes away. So one of the things I wanna tell you on day zero, and this is really actually really important for the next couple of weeks. If you are failing a lot, when you're working on the homework problems. It does not mean you are bad at this, okay? Everybody fails a lot. I fail a lot. You know, all the really experienced software developers I work with on projects for this class fail a lot. It is normal. It is expected. I'm not saying it's fun. I'm not saying it's enjoyable. But it doesn't mean you're not good at this. There's too many people that turn away from this very early because they're like, oh, I couldn't get it to work a few times. So what? I couldn't get it to work a few times either, and that was yesterday. Right? So this is part of life as a program. You get used to it, you develop some mental strategies for dealing with it, but it's normal, okay? So if you're struggling, if you don't get things right the first time, or the fifth time, or the 10th time, or the 20th time, it's okay. Keep making forward progress, keep trying. If you don't give up, you will learn it. If you want some support, come to office hours, ask on the forum, we will provide that support and we will help you. But don't think that because you know, you sat down and tried to do the first couple of homework problems, which I told you were easy, and you didn't get some of them right away, you're not good at this, or you're not going to be good at it, right? Um, that's totally untrue. All right. We'll talk as the semester goes on about some of the really cool things that computer scientists have built that are all around you in the world, right? We'll talk about the internet. That's one of my favorite things to talk about. Um, you know, and maybe if you guys have some topics and things you want to bring up, right? But one of the things that's so awesome about technology today is you guys swim in this ocean that's populated by all sorts of software. Like so much of the world around you is driven by software these days. How you interact with each other, how you date, how you find friends, 
you know, how you get food, how you choose where to go, right? It's like software is at the heart of our lives, right? We interact with it over and over again in so many different ways. All right, so um, my name's Jeff. I like to be called Jeff. Um, professor is okay. Um, Challen is, please no. Um, I, you are welcome to call me Jeff, right? If you see me around, you know, introduce yourself. There's a lot of people in this class. There's a lot of people I've taught at this uh, university. So if I don't recognize you, don't take that personally. Um, if you say hi, then I'll be like, I should know that person, right? And then I'll say hi back, right? So I am pretty friendly. Uh, you will see me around campus. Um, and I like, I really do like meeting students in the class. I have office hours today from three to five. I'll set up regular office hours throughout the semester. You can certainly come to my office hours if you have, need help with a particular problem or you want some support. But really the reason I have office hours is I want to meet you. I want to get to know you a little bit. And so that's what that's for, right? You don't need to have a question to come to my office hours. If you just want to come by, chat, shoot the breeze, tell me more about yourself, uh, find out a little bit more about me, that's great, right? Um, that's what they're for. I really love teaching this class. Right? I look forward to doing this every semester. I didn't draw the short straw at a faculty meeting. Um, I'm here to do this. And this is my focus from now until May. All right? These 15 weeks in the spring, these 15 weeks in the fall, this is my season. Right? The rest of the year, I can, I can hang out, I can peace out, I can chill out. But when the semester uh, comes around, I'm here and I'm doing this every day. Okay. Um, this is not like a side project or something that I'm trying to keep down to a minimum. I really do, we do devote a lot of time and energy to doing this semester to try to provide you with the best experience. That said, there are a lot of you. And so I just want to make it clear that a lot of the things that we've done in this class has, are oriented by, are really sort of driven by two principles. One is that we want you to succeed, okay? The second thing is there's a lot of you, all right? And so for example, if you email me with a question and I respond, please ask this on the forum, the reason for that is because if I start taking questions from each individual student and answering them one at a time, I don't have time to do the other things that I want to do to support this class during the semester. If you ask on the forum, not only can you get an answer from a course staff member who probably knows the answer, but everybody in the class will see the answer to your question. And then we won't get four or five more emails asking for the same piece of information. Okay, um, so again, I'm not trying to be rude. Um, I'm not, you know, trying to not answer your question. Sometimes if you ask me a question in person, I'll tell you to post it on the forum. I might answer it for you, but a lot of times when you ask a really interesting question, I want everybody else to be able to see the answer. And I want our fantastic course staff to be able to help answer it as well, because they are really good, right? I mean, you should see some of the, you know, someone will ask a simple question about something and they'll get these two or three really long, thoughtful, uh, very helpful and encouraging replies, right? Uh, we have some excellent staff here, and the forum is a good way to get them involved. All right, so we have a website. I'm assuming you guys have already been there. You went to lab yesterday. So in, this is really like the number one source of information about the class. The syllabus for this course has evolved over multiple semesters. I am pretty confident that if you have a question, it's probably on the syllabus somewhere. So before you email me, at least take a minute to look through the syllabus and see if you can find it or ask on the form. Um, if you ask something that's on the syllabus, I'll probably write back with just a link to the answer. Again, I'm not trying to be rude. You know, I'm just trying to make space for the other things that I do to try to support the class throughout the semester. All right, so again, you can find out who's involved in the class. So let me talk a little bit about how the course works. So roughly, we divide the course into kind of two, uh, two parts, right? Um, there are the classes, the quizzes, and the homework. So these cover sort of core programming concepts. And then the machine project and the labs to some degree, but really the machine project largely are what give you practice working on a larger uh, project. So in class, we're going to do these small snippets. The homework problems are going to be these small problems that you do every day. That's one way to learn. It's a great way to learn. It's a really successful component of the class. But I don't want to just teach you how to solve these little problems. I also want to give you a glimpse of the fact that once you understand how to do this, you can build bigger, more interesting pieces of software. So that's what the machine project is about. Okay. This semester, I'm also going to assign reading from a book. I know, it's weird, right? Like, 
I, you know, I, I, I'm very opposed to written materials. We'll get to that in a minute. But, um, but this book, Coders by Clive Thompson, uh, I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, it, it's great. All right, so classes for us to spend together working on uh, problems and, and going through the material, okay? Uh, there are a lot of examples that are embedded in the slides, and if you're here and we can go through those together, that's how things are the most effective. If you have a laptop, bring it and use it. In fact, you really need to do that in order to get credit, participation credit for class. That's how we do class, all right? Um, there are no power outlets in here as far as I know. I think there's a few down here at the front. Uh, so bring your laptop fully charged. It's 10 a.m. That shouldn't be too, too tough. Um, so the way that participation for uh, class works is that if you are following along with the slides, meaning that as I am going through the slides, you are going through the same slides in roughly the same order, you will get credit. If you are not, you won't, right? It's, it's really not, it's not complicated. It's not that stringent. This isn't like a reaction test. It's not like, you know, oh, we switched slides. Got to go. You know, it, you know it's, it's, it's much, much, uh, much more lenient than that, okay? Today we started a little bit late. I usually try to start as close to 10 as possible. We have a lot to do. Um, and I will go till 10.50. And I would really appreciate it if you guys don't start packing up early because we typically do have things that we're trying to cover at the end of the class and it's distracting other students around. Okay? We'll have music to help you wake up. Um, that's always an important part of class for me. This is a beautiful space. However, there's quite a few of us in this room, so just be conscious of that while you enter and leave the room, right? Uh, you know, if you need to leave early, maybe sit in the back so that you can get out quickly, um, but you might want to arrive a little bit early to make sure you can get settled, get your laptop out, connect to the Wi-Fi, and make sure that you're ready to get started uh, when class begins. All right. It's not. Oh, and last thing, so the Wi-Fi, I've taught in this room before, the Wi-Fi in here is fine. Um, if you wanna like, if there's like a live stream of a soccer match that you wanna watch or something, like maybe don't do that in class. Um, like it's cool if you wanna watch it and skip class that day, I'm cool with that, but like don't do it in class, right? Um, because any, you know, if there's a bunch of you doing that, then the Wi-Fi may start to melt, melt up. But it hasn't been a problem in the past. Okay. So an important component of this class is homework. We do homework every day, from now until May. Next couple weeks, we're gonna assign homework on the weekend. When the machine project is released, we'll stop doing that, but we're still gonna have homework every day, Monday through Friday. You get a fair number of dropped homeworks, so it's not, you know, if there's one day you don't get to it, that's okay. One day you can't solve it before midnight, it's also okay. Um, but, you know, learning how to do this is about practice, period. And we started this in fall 2018. There is nothing that has been more successful in the class than this series of homework problems. I think you will like them. Question? Yes, they do. Yeah, okay, so I'll, I'll get there in a minute. Yeah. Most of the homeworks will be released at midnight and they're due midnight the same day, right? 11.59, so you have 24 hours to do it. Um, there are definitely students I've noticed in the past that will wait up for the homework problem to be released and finish it like by 2 a.m. Um, if that's your thing, go for it. Otherwise, you have all day to get to it uh, to do that problem. All right. So, and, and again, the homework problems are very, very tightly coupled with what we're doing in class. And so that's, and again, this is an incredibly important part of, of how you learn the material. All right. Um, if you don't get one, that's okay. Like I said, I think you have like 10 homework drops throughout the semester. Um, but, you know, if you start them early enough that you have time to either come into office hours or ask for help on the forum, you should be able to solve most of the problems. We also give you weekly quizzes in the computer-based testing facility. How many people have used the CBTF before? Okay, uh, great. So there's a quiz going on right now. Please take that because this is your chance to practice. But every week, from Monday through Wednesday, you will uh, go to the CBTF and you will take a quiz based on the course content. That quiz will contain programming questions starting next week and continuing throughout the rest of the semester, okay? We have 12 of those uh, assessments that we essentially treat as quizzes that you can drop a couple. The quizzes cover material that was covered uh, up till that point, focusing on the prior, the prior week. There are three midterm exams. The format is the same, they're all an hour. The midterm exams cannot be dropped. 
and they're more cumulative, so they'll cover like a whole chunk of content rather than focusing on one. Okay? Every one of these contains two or three programming problems for you to complete in the CBTF. Um, and here's how I think about this. Okay, and if you come to talk to me, I get students that come in, they're like, oh, I didn't do very well in the quiz, what should I do? And my question is, did you do the homework? The point of the quizzes is to get you to do the homework. If you did the homework problems, and you practiced for the quiz by reviewing them, and you got to the testing center and you had a bad day, just weren't feeling well, or somebody was distracting you because, you know, they were making weird noises or smelled bad or something, or if the, the power went out, it doesn't matter, right? If you don't do well in that one specific hour, but you did the work, you're fine, okay? You're gonna be fine. Um, the point of the quizzes is to get you to do the homework. All right, I have a, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just do this because, I, you know, I, I know students feel, have some mixed feelings about the CBTF, all right? But the CBTF has transformed the way that we teach computer science here. The fact that I can ask you to go to a computer under a controlled environment and solve a problem has totally transformed the way that we teach this. And you guys are lucky to be here at the University of Illinois because here is a list of schools that give weekly computerized exams in their introductory CS1 courses. Us, okay? That's it. This is the only place on earth right now that is doing this in this way, okay? I have in my hand, I had a, I had a course staff member print this out for me, okay? This is the final exam for the famous Berkeley introductory CS course. Maybe some of you guys wanted to go to Berkeley, right? Sorry. Um, here it is, I have it in my hand. What do you notice about this? It's paper. How are you supposed to program on this thing, right? So here's a programming question, all right? They have boxes for you to fill out. Like literally, okay? You write your code in the little box. Can you run the code and see if it's wrong? No, right? This is ridiculous. This is wrong, this is not the way to do things. It is 2020, all right? Enough of that, we don't do that. We assess you using a computer. That is the way that you're gonna write code for the rest of your life. If you take a job and they tell you you're gonna be coding on pen and paper, don't take that job, right? That's not how we write code. The computer helps you solve the problem. When you go in and take these, um, these assessments, you can submit your code as many times as you want to without receiving credit, okay? Why? Because that's how normal software developers work. When I'm working on a piece of code, I run the test, if it fails, I fix the code. I'm not like, oh, too bad, it was on paper, I never knew. Ridiculous, okay? This time this class is being taped, and so Berkeley's gonna find out about this, I'm sure. All right, that's fine, I'm okay with that. Um, I know some people there, they're great people. Uh, actually, I just wanna point this out. There's somebody there who said, who said to us, basically, that they, you know, they're basically they said there are two innovations in computer science education that we don't have that I would love to have, and the CBTF is one of them, okay? So you guys are really lucky to be here and be able to take a class at the University of Illinois where we have this facility, right? It's really gonna help you learn. All right, so I'm running out of time. Labs and MPs, so this semester we're gonna have you do starting in two weeks. This will be released on, I think, February 3rd. A long multi-part assignment that we refer to as the machine project. This is a series, it's one app that you're gonna build in stages. There's a series of checkpoints. You will find out more about this uh, later. The easiest way to do well on this, simple, start early. When we release it, get going, come to office hours, get help, and you'll be fine, okay? If you wait to the day it's due and come in for office hours, you may find a lot of other students that are trying to finish up as well, right? It may be harder for you to get the support that you need. All right, so the book, all right? We don't have a lot of time to talk about this. This is a fantastic book, okay? I read it, I've read it multiple times now. Uh, it's really good, I think you'll enjoy it. And it's also a fantastic introduction to computer science as a culture and some of the challenges and some of the incredible things that we've done as a culture together, right? So please pick it up. There will be questions on every quiz about, starting next week, about the reading, okay? This is a fun book to read. It's not a textbook, it's a popular book, it's well written, it's interesting, I think you'll like it, okay? Um, I know it's a book. So again, the whole point of this class is to get you practice, right? Everything we've done is with that in mind. 
There are no high stakes exams in CS 125, okay? The midterms, I think, are worth like 4% of your grade. That's it. That's the largest single assessment, all right? Um, so that's both a good and a bad thing. The good thing is that we've broken up the work for you, so you're gonna do a little bit every day. And if you do a little bit every day, you're gonna finish this class, you're gonna do well, and you're gonna be like, that wasn't that hard. Everybody said CS125 was such a terrible class, it was so difficult, but I didn't feel that way. And the reason is, you did it in little pieces. You will have done a lot, but you will have done it in small bits, and it makes it feel easy. Okay, so that's the good news. The bad news is, there is no way to save your grade if you decide to like peace out and show up again in April, okay? If you fall off the face of the planet, there's some other courses where it's like, hey, if you cram for a couple of days, you know, fuel by caffeine and uh, whatever those pills people are that, you know, that people take, right? And somehow learn on the material, regurgitate it for the exam, you can pass. You cannot do that in this class, okay? You have to do it every day, right? A little bit, not a huge amount, some days more than others, but a little bit every day. So don't do that. This is what we want, right? Not these big jumps, but like up to the right, a little bit, you learn a little bit every day, you do a little bit more. That's how you learn a skill. That's how you learn how to, that's how you get better at running. That's how you get better in an instrument. That's how you get better at learning a foreign language. This is a skill. You don't cram those things. You have to practice. That's how you get better at yoga. You will do quite a bit by the end. So let me put up some numbers from last semester uh, just to impress you. So in fall 2019, on the homework problems, uh, students submitted by the end of the semester 15 million lines of code, okay? So again, like if you sat down and tried to do this all at once, you would think the class is really hard, but you won't. You'll do a little bit every day, and in May, we'll look back together and you'll be really shocked at how much work you've done. The other thing I want to emphasize, though, is, th is again, just coming back to this, you will fail, okay? So last semester, there were 800,000 submissions on the homework problems. 100,000 had one particular type of error. 275,000 had another particular type of error. 264,000 had another kind of error. These are all wrong, all right? Which left 130,000 correct submissions. So do the math. For every eight submissions, one is right. Seven are wrong. I wish I could say that I'm doing a lot better than that, but my batting average today after doing this for 20 years, not that different, right? What you get better at is not being discouraged. We'll have a fair at the end of the semester. If you guys want to go through these projects, they're pretty cool. People build some really cool apps. So once the machine project finishes, we'll give you about a month to work on your own project. You'll get a chance to show it off in a fair. We'll have some judging and some prizes and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. All right. Um, I'm going, how, how many people here have never programmed before? Ever, ever seen a lot of code? Okay. How many people here have a little bit of experience? Okay, so that's pretty normal, all right? Um, Here's how to approach this class if you're a beginner. So first of all, remember that if you meet someone in this class who seems like they know a lot more than you do, they probably aren't a beginner, right? They've probably been doing this a little while. It doesn't mean you're bad at it and they're getting it suddenly, they just showed up here and suddenly it's all entering their brain. That's not how this works, okay? Don't get discouraged. Some people have more experience than you in a particular area. Does that mean you just don't do it? It's like some people know how to speak Spanish, so I should never learn it because they're already better than I am? No, if you wanna learn how to speak Spanish, learn how to speak Spanish, right? It takes time and energy, just like learning how to program, right? You will get better at it, and trust me, once you start to get good at it and start to gain a little confidence, it gets to be fun really quickly. All right, so let me close up with just you know some ways to succeed in this class. Do the things we ask you to do. Show up for class, show up for lab, uh, come to uh, office hours, right? Do the daily homework problems. Find a time in your schedule that works to sit down. I would allocate half an hour at least. Uh, sometimes it'll take you a little longer than that, sometimes shorter, depends on the problem. Um, but allocate some time every day to do the homework. When we release the MP checkpoints, come to office hours right away and start working, okay? Um, office hours are not just a place to go to get help. Office hours are the place to go to work on things for this class. So if I was you, particularly if I was a beginner, I would put some office hours on my calendar that I was going to go to every week and I would just go there and work on the things I need to do for the class. All right, so we have a CBTF quiz that's already going. 
Um, and finally, use the course form. This is one of the number one resources we have in this class to help you succeed. Great place to ask questions, you know, help other people answer questions, look for information. Uh, that's where we post announcements. We do not send things over email. All right, so today I'm gonna be hanging around after class out in the lobby if you guys wanna chat, and then I'll be back in my office at three, from three to five for office hours if you wanna stop by. Um, this week we've already had some homework problems that are out that you guys are working on. Um, today we have another one that's been released. Let me, let me make a quick note on that. So this semester is starting on a Wednesday, which means the schedule for the next week is a little weird, okay? Um, so all of the first, so there's two weeks of homework problems that we already have queued up. Those are coming out one per day. All of them are due together on Sunday, the 2nd of February. So if you find a problem and you're not prepared to work on it yet, just wait. We'll get to it in class and then you can go back and get it. These are all very easy, okay? They shouldn't take you very long. After that point, the homework will be due on the day it's due, okay? But because of this, the schedule of the semester, there's a few homework problems that are gonna come out before we get to that topic in class. Okay, any questions? Well, I'll be out in the lobby. Find me there, the bell is ringing. Um, I'll, I'll leave these slides up if people wanna see this stuff. Uh, and I will see you guys all on Friday.